Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the GG League Season 1. These are the quarterfinals between the Certa and more Certa, Hora in Certa, which means death is certain, but the hour is not, more or less. And well, my name is Coacher and joining me will be Mito. Wow, what's up guys? Um, I'm just really appreciating like how how pretty the Certa Gaming's logo looks. Wow, that, that is one sick logo, I have to say. It's not bad. Actually, I really like... What is it? The Wolf of Morserta? I think it's a wolf. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It looks fluffy. Um, yeah, yeah, it definitely does. But is it... I can tell what it is. Um, it's a little hard. Is it? Is a wolf? A wolf? Oh my god. Hell yeah. We're getting a Tinker game. <laughs> Man, and you weren't pumped up for this game. How hey, that's wrong not true. You? I'm always pumped. I love Dota. Um, anyways, looking at the bans, wow, they immediately ban the Wisp, perhaps, they don't want anything to counter the Tinker, um, but, and then they remove the Lycan. This is somewhat interesting because they don't want, they don't, the Soto, since they're on the die team, uh, most Soto decides, hey, we're not going to give you the easy Roche with Lycan, because Lycan, I mean, what other hero can really take Roche as fast, if not quicker? The only one I can think of is Ursa, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you have Lycan and Ursa, it's pretty blatantly obvious that Roshi is going to go down, and it's always going to be a concern. Uh, the Soto, they pick up Shadow Demon plus Mirana, the old school combo that can never go wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's just what, what? playing it safe for them, I think, at the moment. Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it's still, it's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still a pretty potent combo. Um, it does set up very nicely, and then just having two ranged heroes in a trial lane gives you the um, ability to play around with different skills as well as choosing. It makes your choosing your lanes a lot easier as well. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, they can still run the Mirana as a support as well, just depending on how the draft actually works out uh, during the end of it. But more Certa, well, having a Tinker and a Disruptor now, the Disruptor I think is a pretty nice counter to the Mirana, of course. It just glimpse him back when he leaps out, for example. Or, I think Static Storm reveals invis as well, so if you catch them, even if the Moonlight Shadow just activates, you can still see them if they're in the Static Storm as well. So, oh, yeah. that's also one nice part of it. Although, both the Tinker and the Resaptor are fairly squishy heroes. So, the Serto, with the two heroes they already have, they have just a lot of potential to just roam and get early kills. And, don't you find it somewhat interesting that since the past couple of days, Batrider hasn't been a priority for any of the teams. It seems like this hero has suddenly just fallen off from its peak, from being the most banned, most picked hero in like the entire history of Dota, essentially, to the point of like, hey, we're just going to completely ignore it. Yesterday, Batrider just didn't even get picked or banned. But today, it seems like it's going to get banned out in the second ban phase. It's still somewhat unusual for me, you know? Like, that hero, it's... I still think it's really good. Yeah, I, mean, I have to agree that I'm also just as baffled as you are, I think, by the fact that it's completely getting overlooked. Like yesterday, I think it was like one or two games when it didn't even get panned out, not to mention picked. So, I guess it's maybe just team preference. I still think if we actually see like those tier 1 teams, for example, in two days for the ESL1, <coughs> we're most likely going to see still a lot of Batrider, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Um... Speaking of r rising to popularity, I think Meepo has to be mentioned, right? Meepo and Tinker. These two heroes, ever since Excalibur played them, has just really surged in, like, dominance in, across, like, all scenes. Amateur players are playing them, pros are playing them, and it feels like finally people have started justifying the Meepo pick, you know? Before, it's like, when you see the opponents pick Meepo, it feels like it's a troll game. But now, Meepo, with, in the hands of a really good player, it does crazy things. Yeah, and, well, I'm always just up for some Meepo games, or at least watching or casting some. I don't think, well, I guess the Serta could go for one. It actually works pretty nicely with the chilling touch of the Ancient Apparition. But, oh yeah, I, I highly doubt it at the moment with the lineup that Morse actually has. As they pick up a center for themselves, and actually... If they just get the blink uh, hoofstomp on any of the three heroes that the Serto has at the moment, that hero is highly likely to die, unless actually the Shadow Demon is there for a nice disruption, of course. Yeah, I'm just still really surprised that, like, nobody has been picking Storm Spirit for 
the t- as a tinker counter, you know, it feels like essentially if you go through your mind, what counters tinker? Um, I think void is okay when you have an acronym upgrade, so you can just keep spamming out the chronosphere and hopefully catch a tinker. Um, but the obvious go to has to be um, the storm spirit, right? And then followed up, I have to say maybe clockwork, maybe vengeful spirit, maybe doxia with the vacuum. I don't know, but it feels like people just haven't really been countering Tinker enough, and when a Tinker is given enough space, he will take over the game. Well, at the moment, I think the Surto, they aren't looking that bad because they have a fairly aggressive lineup with the four heroes that they have. So maybe they are actually looking to heavily invest into trying to shut down the Tinker, maybe even something like a Shadow Demon Mirana dual lane mid. Mm-hmm. Although, then well, again, now that the Viper gets picked up, I guess it could be a Tinker safe lane chest as well, depending on what Deserto wants to run as their own mid lane. Yeah, right now, I, I really love Moserta's lineup. It, it just looks... It, it's strong in every aspect. Like, Viper, what does it lack? It, it's movement speed, perhaps it's his downfall. But with the Sentinel Warrunner, having that Stampede just allows you to chase that hero so efficiently and effectively. Um, you need team fight. you've got the Centaur, you've got Tinker, you've got Disruptor. For tanking, well, needless to say, you got the Centaur. For initiation, you got the Centaur. Disruptor <laughs> can always initiate. Like, everything is a Centaur, right, in the front lines. In the back, you've got these beautiful heroes that, that can dish out so much. And the only thing I would say that was lacking in the lineup right now, perhaps, is just the capability to push Taras. Oh... You have the potential to maybe even go for a jungler as their fifth pick, or just pick up a support hero that can push. Something like a Leshrac, Shadow Shaman wouldn't be too bad, of course. Although, do you think that they might be looking for something like an Abaddon just to counter that arrow, or would it be too much, or just investing in Abaddon. too much? Yeah. Well, I say why not. Um, it doesn't hurt to have Abaddon plus Fiverr, but uh, I feel Abaddon... The, with their lineup, they would need a little bit more lockdown. Um, you're looking at Abaddon, it feels like, oh, what are you going to do um, to be able to shut down the Lifestealer? Man, you're Apart passive, from the Viper Strike. Passive, getting extra movement speed. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I thought the shield would be nice against the arrow as well as just keeping heroes alive against the Ice Blast. Although I actually really liked that the Surto banned out the Rubik because the Null Field would have been so effective already. Plus just stealing any abilities. But the Surto, their last pick is the Magnus. Uh, does that mean it's going to be something like a Magnus mid, Life Stealer, maybe even safe lane or Mirana safe lane with Shadow Demon Ancient Abrasion, Life Stealer, Aggressive try? Well, I think a lot of it will come down to how the laning go. But this might even be a safe lane solo Life Stealer just up against the Centaur because... Life Stealer, um, it, it's it's going to be pretty good against the Centaur, right? It's Centaur is a strength hero. Life Stealer will be able to use the Feast and just regen a lot more HP back in return. Yeah, and of course, just having the Rage once the Centaur actually does want to go for the Hoofstone part, you see a ganking coming. But overall, I think more certain they did a really nice job just picking up the Vipers straight after the Life Stealer got picked up. Because in the later stages, once the Aghanims is up on the Viper, this life stealer is just going to get slowed down constantly by the Viper Strike. As all oh, more sort of they pick up a Lion for themselves. Additional Lockdown, additional Burst as well, to just blow up the life stealer even before he activates the Rage possibly. And ah. I, mean, I really like their lineup. Oh yeah, me too, definitely. But I still prefer Shadow Shaman over the Lion. Uh, simply for the fact that you can... You can just do so much more with it. It feels like you can push. You've got two disables and the hex. If not, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Whose hex lasts longer? I think lions, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, on the first lions level. definitely oh, last. On the first and the last level. I think yeah. uh, Shadow Shaman starts with like 1.25 seconds or 1.5. Ah, okay. And uh, ends at like 3.5. So. Lion is a bit stronger with the hex at least. Mana Drain can be of use, I guess, against the Lifestealer. Actually, usually Lions max out Earth Spike, 1 into Hex, or maybe start with the Hex, but maxing out Earth Spike and then maxing out Mana Drain, and leaving Hex for the last one, because actually it doesn't scale, I mean, I guess half a second, it's pretty nice, but the Mana Drain, especially against heroes like Lifestealer, just stun them up, 
train all their mana and be happy. Yeah, I mean, and it just allows Lion to stay in lane and put on more harassment, whoever he's up against. So I, I like it. But I cannot believe, where is the Lion Immortal? I, I, I haven't seen enough of it. <laughs> I just think the fish is, it's so damn funny. <laughs> Especially like if someone gets a haste rune or like when you hex up a lion and it's running around, you li you actually see the fish swim. Um, so that that's pretty awesome there. <laughs> Indeed, I've only seen it a couple of times as well. But to go over the lineups, four team deserto, one free, endlessly will be the shadow demon. Rhythm playing the Mirana is it actually is a dual lane mid lane with Colts playing the ancient apparition and Yebana zero on the life stealer, leaving the off lane to be played by Felak or Felak. Felek up on the Magnus. Well, before I introduce anyone, looks like Shadow Demon has rotated mid, and he's gonna get jumped. <laughs> oh, that was oh, a huge no. mistake by his rotation. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, at least the Tinker didn't get the first plot. That's all I can say. Although now, a moment, he's gonna get himself some boots. Oh man. Okay. So time for me to introduce the players on Morse. Oh crap, how do you pronounce the team name? More Certa. More Certa. Hora okay. Inserta. Something like that. Alright, thank you for the help right there. So at top, we have Akira playing as the offlane uh, Viper. Mid, it's gonna be Zin Road to something on, on the Tinker. In the jungle right now, running towards bottom, we have CY playing as the support lion. And in this trial lane, the carry is gonna be Hai Yuta playing on the Centaur War Runner. And finally, we have a moment forever playing as a support disruptor. Oh, I do not favor the Magnus's chances on this trial lane at all. One hex followed up by the hoof stomp with the kinetic field just taking his place. Should be an easy kill on the Magnus, especially since Magnus doesn't have skewer quite yet, but he's gonna hit level two. Actually, skewer still gets you out of kinetic field, right? It should. It should. Yeah, yeah but it's not gonna get you out of out of a glimpse. <laughs> Oh, you can always try to run. Um, yeah. Disruptor actually picks up Thunderstrike for himself at the moment just to go for the harass. That's the usual build as well, you start with Thunderstrike, but he went for Kinetic Build because they had that first plot set up on the Shadow Demon. I don't know. I like, yeah. I like what this Tinker's doing. You see, like he's just running much of the machines around 20 second, 30 second of every wave, and then just going in to stack the jungle camp. And so far, he's gotten one stack off. And this would definitely help him keep up in terms of the laning phase. Yeah, because at the moment he's actually not getting any last hits at all. He's 1 and 2 at the moment compared to Rhythm's 8 and 5. So it's not like the Mirana is doing all that well, considering that Yuta on the center has 15 and 4. But still Tinker, so far at least, he's getting shot down, but like I said, he's doing everything that is required of him. Now we're march the machines to get some last hits on the lane as well. So he's probably going to be fine as long as he just keeps on stacking. Yeah, so it's a perfect cycle. Like, you clear the wave. You go and stack the jungle camp, and this this will guarantee him at least a boots of travel by the 9 minute mark. So that, at least he's got that going for him. And if not, he can always go to these three camps right here, and run much of the machine downwards. And it looks like this Magneton wants to contest a little bit for farm. <laughs> oh, Akira might be in trouble top lane. Will there be an open wounds? Actually, life here. He waited for it a little bit. There's a disruption. Shoot PA setup. Although actually chilling touch is already in cooldown. Open wounds come out, and well, they're going to have enough damage in the end anyway. Easy kill for the life tier. And actually, I just wanted to ask you that. What do you actually think of the Viper being offlane instead of the Centaur? Um, well, it's alright. Like, Viper, he's gonna struggle in the offlane for sure. With starting with such a low movement speed. Um, but I guess the upside is if you can guarantee the Centaur, like, a 6 minute blink dagger, then, hey, Viper can just go, go bottom and start farming up, catch up farm. That's what Viper needs. Whereas the Centaur, he's gonna be big. Um, he's gonna be ganking with the Blink Dagger. If you look at the supports from the Soto Gaming, they're, they're fairly easy oh, to kill. Oh, Uta's actually chasing down Felek, the double H coming off cooldown, and gets the kill as well. Okay, that's one step closer to that Blink Dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, that, he, he just bullied him, got one Hoofstone double H, and just kept on chasing, waiting for the double H to come off cooldown, but the rotation is coming in top lane now. Actually by both sides, there's the disruption coming out, chilling touches, well, should be an easy kill onto Akira, but the kinetic field comes on, can they get a counter kill? At least Akira somehow still alive. Finally does fall down now. Cold feet onto Cry, he has to escape, has the haste run and easily gets out of it a moment though. He's not gonna be as lucky, so in the end, it's a two for one exchange. Definitely favoring Tessert though. Wow, yeah, like that, that was some weird play from 
most Masurda. Um The supports came in from the side, but then the Viper got caught first. Um, they needed to get the jump, and even if they did get the jump, it feels like uh, they're probably going to lose in that trade anyways. Oh, The Shadow Demon actually came in to just place down his sentry or to block the pull from happening. Which actually is one thing that you absolutely have to do, especially against the Radiant Tinkers, because it's so easy for them to do that. Actually, he saw the Observer Ward being on the high ground as well, but he just didn't want to commit himself alone. But oh, another rotation top lane can they actually catch the Life Dealer. I think with the Rage, he should be fine. There's no mm. Viper Strike either to slow him down through it, and oh, never mind. <laughs> now Rhythm, he's gonna go in for the Observer Ward mid lane. Shadow Demon getting some backup. Yeah, so some easy dewarding for the Soto. Um, I don't know, like this support duel, they they don't really have much damage. You look at Disruptor, his build is 1-1-1. One, one, one. His Thunder Strikes offers pretty much nothing. And you look at Lion, he his impel is only level 2. It only does 130 damage. Uh, I don't think they have enough to take down any hero from the Soto right now. They need the Centaur to come into play ASAP, and he's gonna have his Blink Dagger at six minute mark. Wow. So it's a it's a really good timing. Yes, and they need him. You have the Stampede as well to actually maybe get Lion in range for the Kill and Mirana mid lane, for example, something like that. And well, like you said, the Centaur has to start making plays before both the Blink as well as the Ultimate, and he's already making the rotation as well. The Surtur they actually don't have any vision on the bottom side of the map either. So I think mid lane, it's gonna be the center of attraction. Oh, it's gonna definitely be a war zone right there. Uh, everyone's in position. Let's see if anything's gonna happen. Well, Tinker just does what he always does best: running those marches, stacking up camps. Um, oh, he's if, if he pushes out the lane like that, how can they get a jump on the Mirana? And if they don't, then the center is it's just night wasting time. time. It's night time. You push out the wave and then just have the center run in. <laughs> At the moment, what realistically happened instead is center. He ran mid. And running back bottom. So actually that's like one minute wasted, especially since the Magnus got free farm during it. Has his arcane boots now. Has his reverse polarity ready as well. So now actually the Surtur, they are the ones that can maybe smoke up and come rotate bottom lane. Hmm. Bottom lane. What can they do there though? Um, Centaur is low. Magnus has RP if, if need be. Actually Magnetar is doing pretty well. Level 6 already with only one death in his name. I mean, that's what you get when you just leave the lane even for one minute. Just easy XP, easy farm. As Zin finishes up his soul ring on the Tinker now. Still one and a half thousand away from his boots of travel spots. He's actually catching up in last hits fairly well thanks to farming up the jungle. 32 and 3 now. Yeah, he should just go into jungle and just take the multiple stacks right there. That, that will accelerate his farm by a significant amount. Um, and then at the same time, you can give one of the supports mid and have them catch up in terms of leveling. Indeed. I, mean, I actually really like teams who utilize the mid laners being able to just maybe rotate around or farm up the jungle or something and have the support soak up XP. Especially for the Lion as well as the Disruptor. Getting those level 6s just make such a huge difference. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I'm still waiting for Mosoda to make rotations happen. I don't, I don't like this idea of having just a Centaur farm when he's at the peak of his damage. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but I mean, with his farm, what do you actually think he might be looking towards? Is it something like a pipe, maybe? Pipe? That that would be the obvious go-to, but I don't know. Oh, um, top lane, Akira. Another disruption. Chilling touches there. Open wounds, probably to follow as well. Oh, the Stampede actually might get out the last right clicks. There won't be enough kinetic for keeping them in place as well. Oh, that's One Stampede. Stack. One stack, and he goes down. Oh, man. He still goes down. I don't know, like, that's a problem, like, with having the Viper in the offlane. He can't do anything. And this is the stage where you want that Viper to farm. He's useless in this offlane. Sure, he's got, like, the buckler as well as the headdress, but... Oh, another disruption, oh my god. <laughs> Sai, easy fall, or actually easy... T oh my god! Never mind, the skewer will get the kill reverse party. No, not gonna attempt it onto a moment. But just two easy kills, and maybe they can even try to pressure the tower a little bit. Yeah, this is... This is definitely a good time for um, the Soto to start some pushes. But Tinker, let's see, what's his gold? 1600, so only 400 gold away from oh. that. 
The last I looked at him, he had 1,000 less. Wow. Yeah, he just took the ancient. That's what ancients give. <laughs> Look at how many centuries um, Morsoda has put down at, in the mid lane just to help the Tinker D ward. <laughs> he actually spotted that out as well when he was doing it. It was <laughs> really we. Really a shame for them that the first century ward wasn't on target. But I mean Tinker getting his boots of travel is definitely worth the investment into the centuries. I mean he's gonna get it like eleven minutes in, which is definitely not a bad timing considering the lane that he had or the start that he had, as well as him having the soul ring and all talisman and a bottle already as well. Mm -hmm. And here comes the money. That last centaur should just about guarantee that boots of travels. And let the fun begin. Still needs to farm the blink dagger, I suppose. Um, on the other hand, how's the Magnus doing? Nope, nothing. Well, I guess the Sertor, they don't have too much going for them anyway, yes. Yebane, I think he maybe has his drums finished. No, never mind. Going for Hand of Midas actually after the face boots and a bracer. Oh wow, so they are looking to take this game late. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any other explanations other than, yeah. The game is going to go on for a long time. Do you think the Mirana uh, is also going for one at the moment then? He has 1.7k gold in the bank. Might as well. Um, most Miranas, they, they like to get the Midas after the face boots. Just because of her ridiculously crappy starting out right click damage. I think it's like 47 or 49. Um, so it's nothing too great. But after the face boots, hey, last hit's easy. Then it's like, yeah, why not get a catch on Midas? And if this game is going to drag because of Tinker, you might as well just all get 6 slotted to the point where Tinker doesn't hurt. Which is pretty far-fetched to say. <laughs> yeah, Tinker will almost always hurt. Of course, if you can just keep the Tinker down, although at the moment 77 and 3, you can see him just taking over the leaderboard as far as last hits go. Of course, some of them are jungle creeps, but then again, some of them are ancients as well, giving even more gold. And actually, he's top of the net worth as well. This Tinker is doing really well. Actually, he hasn't died either, so... I guess the Serto, they didn't apply too much pressure mid lane at all. Even though it started as a dual lane, the Shadow Demon rotated around pretty early. Yeah, so... Let's see... Seems like everyone's just playing this really passively. I don't... I haven't seen 12 minutes in. I don't think there was a single attempt on a tier 1 tower from... Either team. Um, just looking at the tier 1 tower HP. Wow. Both offlane tier 1 towers are standing at like over half, so it feels like both teams are just content to sit back and farm. Yeah, I'm not even too sure who is favored. I guess with the end of Midas's, maybe the Serto, but even that's maybe a stretch because a Tinker just getting farm is so damn scary. He's only 500 gold away from his Blink Dagger already as well. I mean, his farm rate is just through the roof, although I'm still expecting just to see the first Blink initiation by the Centaur. I, I well, don't think we've yeah. seen one, right? I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, I can't recall. Um, well, who does a favor, though, into the mid-game? Just having so many free-farm heroes. Like, this is one of the things that hi I feel like higher-level teams usually don't have going. Because generally, you want try to try to get some advantage going in the early game phase. And just securing that lead, and then continue to apply pressure and just like extending that lead um, because if both teams are farming it, it becomes such a stalemate you don't really know who's gonna get the upper hand it feels like it's leaving everything down to luck and chance like oh I just happen to catch you in a better position and I end up winning the clash so I don't think that's what either team will want to do so there has to be a farm war somewhere right wow and Tinker this is some pretty good last hits 103 in 14 minutes. That, that's that's pretty standard. He's just pretty getting good. more and more. He's not stopping anytime soon. And well, having his blink there already as well. But oh, top lane, they're going for Yebane. They get the Lion ultimate and use it to perfection as well early on. So actually, they blew through ultimates for that. The Stampede, the Static Storm, and the Finger of Death. But stopping the Life Stealer from farming, which is probably the hardest carry on the sort of team in the near future. It's mm -hmm. probably worth it, especially since Stampede, it's a low cooldown anyway. Static Storm pretty low as well. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Um, well, this, this game is just going back into passive farming after a couple of ganks. Oh, wow, Tinker and Tinker. Had a solo kill. Yeah, just bursting down the ancient apparition. Overstayed, overstayed his welcome for sure. Like, after that one, the, the initial rocket, 
he was below half HP. But I don't know if they're baiting the Tinker, but because you, you saw the Magnus rotating mid as well. But <laughs> Tinker shooting out the rocket, blink over with a quick laser, cleared up <laughs> the AA and just walks away. Oh man, Tinker's burst is just so ridiculous. And actually, AA, he's been level 6 or well, he's level 7 even. But he's had that ultimate for some time, and I don't think you've ever seen just a harassing one even. Just holding on to it. Maybe he's waiting for Magnus to get his blink dagger, which is actually only 60 gold away. Yeah, and look at just how much the stacks are going for um, more Soto right now. And it feels like the Soto, if you're gonna play the farming game, shouldn't getting rid of the Ancients be a priority? Um, there is way too much stacking going on. Wow, another triple stack of the Ancients. Really, this Tinker, 7.7k net worth already, 123 last hits for him. Already has a Staff of Wizard actually, so it looks like it's a straight up Dagon for him. Or do you think it might be a 4 Staff? Dagon, it has to be a Dagon. I, I don't see why you want a 4 Staff at this stage of the game. Um, with a Dagon on top, Tinker can just pretty much burst anyone down, and I guess people have started realizing after getting Dagon 1, it's more cost efficient to get the E-Blade. Um, I actually don't know the math, but it seems like that's the way to go. Oh, the Stampede comes out, but the Rage was there, but the Lifestyle Ice Blast coming out as well. Sai in so much trouble, actually, they get the Killing Fist, comes out, Static Storm still activated, but Moonlight Shadow, they should be safe. Can they actually turn it around? Maybe no. It already backs off. So, although MCAHI, they went for the initiation, they actually kind of failed because the Rage came out before. Oh, Blink! With the disruption by the Shadow Demon, will there be a follow up? No. Just Blink out by the Centaur. I guess that's one of the downsides of disrupting targets with a blink dagger. Yeah, um, but but that's what that's that's why people have been picking Jakira a lot more because items like your scepter and disruption, like those kind of things. If you just lay down the ice path, then you get frozen in place. You know, you know that's actually a pretty funny gimmick. Um, in Dota One, like if you shift Q, blink dagger, right? You you can actually blink out of the ice path. As, like, basically, if I lay down an ice path when you're in your scepter, or like if you're TPing onto a creep that's being ice path, in Dota 2, you get frozen. But in Dota 1, you're capable of blinking out. And same with things like Black Hole. Like, you can actually shift, say, you shift TP onto a creep, and then you shift a blink, and the opponent casts a Black Hole on the spot. Yeah, you're still capable of blinking out, but not in Dota 2. I mean, At least that was the last time I checked. Thank God, to be honest, I mean, it would be pretty sick if you can just shift you out of black hole, it's like, what? Although, well, Yules now, it actually does damage upon landing now. So, cannot be done anymore, shift queuing out of there anyway. Yeah, I mean, th oh. I like, I love Yules right now. God damn, Felek, man. Just shoot just... a flow in the reverse, but I just straight up, kill the lion. Yeah, I think any, any kill counts right now. Um, Although actually, uh, I don't understand why Shadow Demon wasn't the one initiating with his own blink tiger, but top lane, the rage is there, ice blast to fly as well, leap the arrow, oh, the reverse party onto two actually, dodging the arrow, but Starstorm, can they get the kill onto a moment? A nice glimpse was there on the Magnus to actually make sure that no follow up, skewer or shockwave was to come. So can it really be that the reverse polarity was just used for nothing? Oh man, Th this kind of a pause, it's really not cool. And more Serta are definitely not happy with it. Directly just unpausing. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I always love to see a little bit of flaming going on. <laughs> yeah. Get the anger going, guys. No, 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 not really. <laughs> but it, it is... Sometimes it's nice to see a little rivalry, but this isn't the kind of scenario where you want to see it. Normally it should be like, oh, we beat you guys last time, this time we're coming back for revenge, you know, that kind of rivalry. But when you're playing any kind of sports, you always want some sportsmanship, and wow, that might have just sparked a little... Um, what's the word for it? What's it? The animosity? Is, it, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I think it is at least. Alright, so a lot of pings are coming out. It's like, oh yeah, we just glimpsed the <laughs> Magnetol all the way back to mid. Um, lines are being drawn on the mini-map. Man, this Tinker Boots of Travel sound is so irritating to the ears. I have to agree. Alright, I'm gonna look elsewhere on the map. With the Tinker, it's... Yeah, the animation, me... I've seen uh -huh. better Immortals. Come on, come on. Emotions are running high. Oh, they are ready! 
As rhythm is gonna be in trouble. There's no hoof to put out about. Oh man. I guess Tinker just came in. He's already level 15 as well. Oh my god. Has to take on level 1 finish. Just keeps on rearming. Keeps on bursting down people. Is he, is he actually gonna go for more? Oh, you don't have what? to be mad. It's only game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Oh, Let come on, raging oh, Tinker. Begin. He wasn't paying Rage attention. Dota, best Dota. And that's another kill for the Tinker. But did you know something? The Shadow Demon actually has a Blink Dagger. I said it before. You did? You never listened. Oh man. Funny now I'm casting with you and I'm not even hearing what you're saying. Shame <laughs> on me. Oh, Tinker. Shame oh, never mind. Not gonna get more. Felek gets his Blink out. But yeah, he's had it for like, I think, three to four minutes probably now or so. And he clearly doesn't want the E play. He wants just straight up Dagon. That, that's pretty good as well. Um, it gives you more mana. Oh, who stopped on the calls? And this Tinker, he's getting way too much accomplished to be honest at the moment. 4 0 and 1. Level 16. Closing up on level 17 soon enough. Me. I have no idea what the Soto is doing though. It feels like they're just sitting back passively and just farming to no avail. Oh, there's a demonic purge in a moment. Will there be follow up Felek? Blink, skewer? No, not gonna happen. Is there a pipe already on Utah as well? Hmm. I mean, they have mech, they have pipe, they have Dagons, they have everything. So, yeah, th they should be ready to push and just make things happen. Why wait any longer? Um, wow, even Lion has Blink Dagger, like you said. Um, the timing should be now. Like, what more are you waiting for? And at top, oh, Life Sealer. Oh, Static Storm counters. Oh, they catch Felic maybe with the Glimpse. Never mind. There's no follow up, but Static Storm just completely wrecked Life Sealer for the second time now. Wow, and did you notice Tinker is level 17 and still only has level 1 rearm. Normally you you would just get level 2. Um, level 2 seems to be the most cost efficient um, level until you have enough items to support level 3. Because level 1, sure, its mana cost is much lower, but the rearm time is way too long. 3 second isn't something that you want to have as a Tinker. Well, that's oh, why he's going for the max top Dagon. So Even with the max Dagon, um, level 2 is still good. Just having two levels into Rearm, it's 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 a great thing to have. Oh, well, maybe he just feels like it definitely won't be enough as far as just his mana pool is concerned. Although I think with the Dagon, it should be fine to at least have it on level two. Maybe just waiting for level eighteen. Oh, with the reverse right actually goes out only out to side, but who's them stopping the skewer? Ice Blast easier to fly. Nice defensive disruption as well. They do get the kill on Lion and Felek now. Oh, he's so damn close to dying. It's just didn't have the follow-up Tinker, where are you at man? Eat chicken missiles. Nice blink torch by the Shadow Demon. And, and that's why you want level 2 rearm. You saw right there. That that was the difference between a kill and an escape. Uh, oh. I guess you are correct. But we will see if it was just maybe a misclick or don't know what it may have been. But he's about to hit level 18 anyway. Yeah, and another question that I always have is like I don't understand why people always like to have Tinker and Viper in the same lineup. I don't know, like, most games that I've seen with Tinker as of late has Viper. And have you seen this Viper do anything? Like, that's my question right there. He practically has had no impact on the game other than just feeding. Yeah, but feeding just that, like that was world. tactical feeding because he bought space for the Tinker, especially since the Shadow Demon actually had to rotate top to kill, get the kills on the Viper. So it was a 1v1 mid lane, I mean, tactical feats to ensure Tinker's boots of travels. Well, I mean, Viper, sure, it's a counter to the Lifestealer, but... I can think of better heroes than the Viper, well, if, he's, if you really just want... He has built in extra magic resistance as well, which is always nice against just every other hero except the Lifestealer. Oh, but Sai, he's in trouble, gets skewered back, shockwaved up to his death, Lifestealer gets the kill. Oh, the shirt out. They snatched themselves one, but I mean, they're still so far behind. Just look at the net worth on the Tinker. Almost 14,000 with the life tier sitting at 8k. Yeah, and wow, this Tinker's last hits is pretty astounding as well. Sitting at around 220 at 22 minute mark. Wow. It's always it's always impressive when like your last hitting it's around 10 creeps per minute. Yeah, it, it's a pretty scary feat. But a lot of it has is attributed to the fact that his teammates have been stacking for him. 
Teamwork, that's what it's all about. And actually, like, some teams completely just forget about or don't care about stacking. Whereas some other teams, they're just like, stack, 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 stack every single time. Doesn't even matter if they have proper stack clears, they will stack anyway. Especially if the supports are going for rotations. You can just easily stack the camps while doing so as well. Just make the most out of your rotations. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess it's going as we predicted. It's a slow game. Um, less than one kill a minute. Um, this this is somewhat reminiscent. Oh, oh the reverse priority! A nice glimpse to Akira. Somehow still alive. Can he pop the mech? The static storm. No, he goes down before. Five second arrow was just a little bit too much to handle. Yeah, I don't know. This Viper pick. <laughs> it just hasn't... Ha really hasn't done anything for more Serta. Creating space for the Tinker! <laughs> Oh, Tinker's Tactical level 19, feats. with a Dagon level 5, and the Ghost Scepter now as well. Oh man, this is one filthy fat Tinker. Is there any way to stop him? Look at the Serto's lineup, right? They literally cannot push out unless they pick off the Tinker. Like, without the Tinker, then the game would be so much easier. But, because there's a Tinker, all the creep wave is going to be pushed out, and then the Serto, before they have a pipe, before they have enough health regen on their heroes, they are just going to play uh, a, a pretty static, passive farming game. I mean, do they really come out on top with the farm? We talked about it a little bit before as well. I mean, yes, Mirana and the Lifestealer, they can do a lot of damage, especially with the Lifestealer having his armlet. But it's actually being cooped up inside Felek for quite a while. And Oh, it's a bait! Uta, he jumps in, there's the hooftop Lifestealer, he comes out at one target. It's already dead and Stampede out of there as well. And is Sin gonna go for more? He wants to get anything done. The Dagon comes out, he's taking missiles as well. He actually does have level 2 rearm now. He's almost level 20 as well though. Oh man. Ice Blast. Not gonna hit anybody. And that was Viper <laughs> split pushes. Oh yeah, the best pu pushing hero in the game. Slowly chips away at the tower. Hurrah. Oh, another Dagon into Yabane. I would have wanted to see just immediate rearm blink after and wait for the rage to wear off. Although then again, it's six seconds, so. But yeah, I feel like he could have done it. He has a ghost scepter. It's not like the life still can hit him or do anything. Um, wow. So none of the towers from Morsoda has fallen. Bottom tier one is still at four HP. Mid sitting at about half. Top tower slightly above half as well. Looks like we have a three end in the game. Oh man, <laughs> it's like the invisible tree, right? He's permanently in nature's guise. Even the castles can't see him. <laughs> Next level, just cheat. It's the newest cheat uh, known to Dota 2. <laughs> the Game Shark for Dota 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I missed that stuff. Goldfinger, Game Shark. Good old times when you're playing Pokemon. And it's like, how do I get a Mew in the first 150... Like in, in Pokemon Red? You just couldn't get it in the Western versions other than cheating. So I was like, ha, ah, have to get a Goldfinger. Get a Mew for yourself. Enjoy. <laughs> and all. Zin, he almost has his E Blade as well, just 400 gold away from it. And once he gets that item, anybody is his target. He can literally blow up even the Mirana, I think, with one blow. Oh, <laughs> so he's very good at blowing. <laughs> Alright, so the Shadow Demon, it's that's an instant combo death right there, like just go scepter. I mean, E Blade into a Dagon, boom, goodbye. Same goes for Ancient Apparition. Mirana, uh, potentially. Well, he's he's still gonna miss all the laser on top of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Still still gonna die in one full combo. Uh, but you do expect a leap to happen, so it, it might be able to dodge the heat, mis heat sticking missile. But with a rearm, blink, follow up, um, should be enough. It looks like top centaur is waiting, but this is a counter initiation in place, sitting all the way behind. You have everybody from the Soto sitting behind the Lifestealer, apart from the Mirana. Well, I mean, if they get the Hoofstomp and the Tinker actually gets the TP in and gets his combo off while the Hoofstomp is in effect, they're probably oh, gonna get Tinker the kill out of Oh my god. Oh, they find Centaur! Oh, they find Centaur! Oh, the Hoofstomp is! They really go for the double edge. He actually has the pipe as well, doesn't even have to pop it, just stampede his way out of there. Moonlight Shadow is there as well. And, oh, never mind, the open wounds come out as well. Uta probably gonna take a full double edge. Not even gonna happen. But actually, in the end, it does. The disruption came out as well, and Tinker will be see the first death of him. He has the Ghost Scepter already, the Ethereal Blade activated, Mech by Akira as well. Nice, looks like Viper. He wanted to join the fight, but didn't even use the ultimate. 
<laughs> ah, vai oh, for boom. Zap. I really feel like the Arcana for Tinkerer should just be a Dagon, like a special Dagon. I, I want it to be like, um, what is it? The Storm Spirit Roll. Wow, those lasers look so cool. It looks like it's from Gundam, you know, like the, well, when they have that the, the super big blaster thing in Gundam, uh, what's it? Sea Destiny, I think. I have not watched Gundam. Oh, and I thought you watched a lot of animes. Dude, that doesn't mean I watch every anime. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you, Couch. Maybe if I wasn't playing or <laughs> casting Dota, I would have watched it by now. Ah, okay. Is it still shame on me? Is it? No, no, no. You can never complain when, when it's connected to Dota. It, <laughs> you can only respect the person for committing so much to Dota. Dota is a lifestyle. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Hopefully, it can be a life-providing style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, that, that's every, every Dota player's dream. Um, wow. Okay, so try to engage on rhythm. Just gets away with an easy leap. What do you think he's saving up for? Is it going to be a Manta style or is it going to be up of Lincoln Sphere? Well, I don't think any will matter too much, but I would actually favor the Lincolns, I think. Mm -hmm. Because Manta, what's it really going to do? It's just the illusions are going to get blown up anyway by March of the Machines, Double Legend. Oh, oh! Speaking of blowing up, 460 gold in the focus of the Tinker for killing rhythm. Alright, we definitely figured that one out. Like. <laughs> Even Mirana can't sustain through the burst, so let's see. Magnus would definitely die in one one combo. So the only person who can potentially survive is going to be the life stealer from but, just that one combo burst from Tinker. By the way, how so, does it actually work in Dota? Like, if you send a heat seeking missile flying, is the damage calculated then, or is it calculated when it actually hits? When it actually hits. Okay. So I think what happened there was he sent the heat seeking missiles to fly, then blinked in ethereal bladed to get uh, extra damage on heat yep. seeking missiles as well as the Dagon. And do you know why E Blade? Um, people are starting to pick up E Blade earlier now, rather than like the, in the old patch. People didn't really bother with um, E Blade until after the Dagon five. A lot of it has to do with the change on um, the heat heat seeking missile. Before, right? Like if you ethereal someone, oh top. Oh, look at Life Stealer. <laughs> oh my, Armlet oh Toggle TP, Viper Strike is there, Stampede as well, no. He gets out. But, oh man, no. Oh, Freedom also escapes with 60 HP. There's the Reverse Proactivity, want to kill Sin so bad. He's Shadow Demon is there as well. Soul Catcher activated, and Tinker, I think he's actually gonna fall down. The Hoof Stomp is there, no. He does take a fall with the Ice Blast flying in as well. So that's 1,000 gold going into the pockets of the Shadow Demon. Yep, yeah, allow me to quickly explain after, I mean, well, the fight's over, right? In the previous patch, um, before Tinker got patched, what happened was Tinker, if you E-Blade someone and then you and then you throw out heat seeking missiles afterwards, right? It's not gonna hit the the, the whoever you E-Blade, and that makes it really awkward. So if you ever want to use heat seeking missile with E-Blade, you always have to shoot the rockets first and then blink over E-Blade the person after, and then the rockets will hit. Oh, that sounds really weird. A really weird interaction of spells. I felt like, is he gonna get blown up? Never mind, Tinker is a little bit too far away. But that's that sounds so awkward to me. I guess that's just a Dota thing. Yeah, but it got fixed. So now that's why E-Blade is so much better. Because you can always E-Blade someone first and then use the rocket. If oh, need be. Will there be a jump? Hoof stomp! Oh, one hero is blown up immediately. Nice force step on the Shadow Demon. Kinetic Field came out as well. Last the arrow landed on Uta. Man, there's just nothing the Serto can do at all to take the fight. Yeah, and it's so weird. Like in the draft, Tinker was the first pick, and then they don't do anything to counteract the Tinker pick. Um, it, it's highly questionable, and it's okay if you don't want to pick direct counters to Tinker. But like, it's like the the way they play the game. They just didn't exert any pressure it's on the Tinker. It feels like okay, we're just gonna go over place the Sentry Ward against the Ward, then we're just gonna go back, sit back, and farm the entire game to the point where it's like, oh yeah, crap, we can't do anything to Tinker right now. Um, so that's some um, pretty awkward. Yeah, I think they certain they were definitely banking on getting a better early game, just so they can actually maybe try to lock down the Tinker and just be annoying at all. Oh, never mind, Yabane rages out of the glimpse. Although, with the Rage on cooldown, he actually can't stay on lane without worrying for his life. And there's a Blink Dagger on the Viper now. <laughs> blink Dagger Viper. He's gonna be Rat useful now. Rat Tinker. 
I mean, sorry, Viper, go Viper, do something. <laughs> oh, this nope. is a disruption onto Uta. Will it be enough? Oh, Shadow Demon almost immediately blown up the mech. Even that wasn't enough with the E Blade Heat Seeking Missiles and Stampede. Just to get Sai out of trouble and now Rhythm blown up as well by the ticket. Just going in one by one, Felic. Like nothing for him to do either. Another day gone. Triple kill for Zin. Is he gonna get Yebane? Probably he's hoofed him. Actually, it's still on cooldown. Open owns onto Uta. Blade Mail activated. Actually, infest into one creep, but it's in denied range. So he's gonna take a full rage up. He's actually pretty damn tanky with the armlet, with the rage, but in the end. There's a rampage. Rampage. So 33 minutes. Tinker has 14 kills, one one death, two assists, 332 last hits. And wow. Really? Did it need to smack talk like that? Sure they're winning the game, but that that's just that's just kinda rude. By the way, he's boots of travels. He has a chain minute that says how many times he's teleported back to base. Ah, oh, that's pretty thicker. awesome. Overall, I think you can inscribe different things into that, right? Yeah, you can. I know I have, uh, in some game, maybe it was Empire vs. Fnatic yesterday, they, Excalibur had like how many rearms he does. Yeah. So the ones I have on my boots, I think, is number of rearms, um, teleports to base, laser kills, heat seeking missile double kills. So Those pretty much have it all. No, I, I want something Dagon related, like how many people you've Dagoned. I have no Dagon. idea how you can, or how the inscri inscribing works at all. Oh, I, it's really simple. I like, was in the army, I came back, I was like, what the hell are these items in my inventory? Um, you, you just have to buy the gems, and then like, you just get a chisel. Um, a chisel has five charges. Oh, bottom lane, Hex! Oh, actually, life still gets out of it. Was there a diffusal bait? I don't know what. But Sai now, he's on the run with the stampede, and everybody makes it out. But, how the hell did he get out of that hex? No idea. <laughs> uh, maybe someone... Oh, Demonic Purge, right? It has to be. No, but it's... Of no, it's only enemy. And, yeah, enemy. it's enemy units as well only. Huh. Well, the only way I can think of is like having a diffusal or some kind of well, purge. It must be like, like he activated too. Rage just in a split second that the hex came out and Rage had a delay in activating all the... That's it's weird, but oh, bottom lane, oh, double blinks, hoofed up, off target, arrow into the face of Uta. They finally get themselves a proper kill. Because Hex is instant cast. There is no animation for Hex, so... I don't know. That's that's kind of weird. Well, whatever the case may have been, Uta is the one to fall down. Tinker still keeps on firing 23k net worth, even a sheep stick on him now. So actually he has 2.1k mana, so lots of mana to work around with as the sort of they're going for Roche at the moment. Actually, I mean, considering how far ahead uh, MCR, like 25,000 almost in gold, 25,000 in XP as well. They just, like you said, they don't have any push and all. Will we see a big static storm? Felic Easter has the reverse parade as well. Does he really want to use the one target? Skewer is there. One hero blown up and actually Shadow Demon now. He's the one in trouble. Sai, Ice Blast does connect and actually taking a lot of damage. Earth Spike with its ultimate. Does do the damage onto one rhythm hexed up as well. They get the kill and oh yeah, bunny just blown up as he reaches the shadow demon. Now Colts gonna get blown up and already got like for Zin another hex onto Yabani this time around. That damage it's ridiculous actually. Zin oh he just watching his as his buddy dies. Oh don't let Akira die please. Oh no the hex comes out just in time. The right clicks the laser triple kill for him. Hmm that the tinker play was a little bit slow on the hex. Um they could have killed the. What's it? The life steal a lot quicker, and Akira didn't have to take so much damage. But it doesn't really matter. This is gonna be a tier three at least. And here comes the buybacks. Oh, life stealer porting in. Don't think he can he can do very much though. Oh, to be Shadow frank. Demon wants to chase down, but oh, he's gonna get tapped. He actually defensive disrupts himself. But laser Dagon. Goodbye, my love. This. You just can't stand up to it. Even the life stealer gets blown to smithereens with that. Oh, he's Who gonna pick in aggressively. Oh, shotgun, Dagon! Another kill, godlike. Someone kill him! 18 you one know who's, three. Who's, who's pretty good at dealing with Tinker face up? I think Chaos Knight's not bad. Um, just having those mass illusions directly bring him in in the middle, stun him up, a few right clicks. Phantom Plus, Lancer. Chaos Knight. Oh yeah, Phantom Lancer. They're, Don't care about heat seeking missiles, just keep on soaking the rockets up with the illusions. And then there's always Meepo. Meepo is pretty good. Well, but 
I guess you can try to burst one Meepo and just to kill them all as well. <laughs> well, Meepo yes, has increased magic life. resistance though, right? Yeah, he has like 35% magic resistance. Oh, defen not defensive. Disruption comes out. No, blink out. The static Storm actually catches two as well. It's an Aghanim Swift Static Storm as well. There's the Earthspike on to like one down. Will they get Yabane? Glimpse back. Will there be a shotgun? Not, the, not even a shotgun. Actually, the finger of death came out. Yabane is somehow still alive. Moon Knight Shadows. But Sin comes in, finds himself rhythm. He's gonna go for more. He doesn't have a gem though. Man, there's a GG call. But it's, how funny is it to see a finger of death in comparison to Dagon 5? <laughs> it feels like it's just not on the same level. I mean, sure, it definitely isn't. But it's still kind of funny to see it go that way. Get on my level, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's only 75 difference in damage by the end because level two finger theft does 725, but just boost it up with the ethereal blade, of course, the Dagon, and it's just so much more. But that's GG. Game number one goes to Certo. As uh, quite convincingly, to be honest, nothing that was done about the Tinker from the get go, more or less. And from there on, it was just the Radiance game to lose. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I guess. Oh, never mind. The lobby is not even up. What is this? The lobby is not up. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. But this was only game number one in a best of three series. So don't go anywhere. And of course, if you liked us, be sure to follow us on our Twitch. This channel as well as Hefla TV 1 and Hefla Moke, All the English channels for Hefla TV and our social media. Facebook, Twitter and VK if you're Russian. All of them are Hefla TV. So yeah, be sure to check it out. Just a few songs though as we finish up this, this game. Wait for game number two to start. <laughs>